my very first hybrid comparison. And it's four of them, so we didn't go small on this one. Stay tuned and we will go over all kind of stuff concerning hybrids. Welcome back to the McGolf Shop. Jim McCleary here. This is the McGolf Channel where we talk about golf club repairs, golf club reviews, golf club fittings. All so your scores can go low. If you would, like, subscribe, hit that stuff across the bottom of the note right where you're looking, and that way more of this information gets out to the YouTube universe. Also, we have a live stream. It is on Mondays at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time or 17.30. And it's, talk, it's a live uh, interaction between you and I on the very same topics and some other stuff, whether it's barbecue or whatever. It's, uh, it's good fun, so come join us. All right, hybrids. Hybrids are a, becoming a must in the bag of very many golfers. Very many golfers? For a lot of golfers. Now, the ones that typically don't like hybrids are the ones that say, oh, it looks closed face to me, or I hook them off the planet, and rightfully so. However, since the inception of the Cobra Baffler way back in the day, that hybrids have grown into such a popularity that there's so many different models out there to choose from that certainly there is one out there now. Uh, the same cannot be said against fairway woods. Now, in the fittings that we conduct here at McGolf, we always test. We try to see, you know, the question is, do you hit your fairway wood good? And the dead giveaway is, well, when I hit it well, it goes well. Well, yeah, it can be said about the same about every one of the clubs in your bag. However, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for when I hit it, I hit it poorly, I hit it well. Won't take your pick. Now, what I typically do is I'll take a four hybrid and a three wood and I will see, do you hit it well or do you not? Uh, the more percentage, the higher percentages, the average golfer hits the fair or hits the hybrid way better, the four hybrid way better than the three wood. All right, why is that? Well, in most cases, not all, okay, we're all talking about most here. In most cases, the way that the golfer swings and comes into it is way more favorable for a hybrid. One, because it's shorter, to sometimes it's more upright, sometimes not, and that they can control the club better and the quality of hit goes higher. And when you get those combinations together, you end up in longer distances and better control than say a fairway wood, okay? Fairway woods, again, it varies by manufacturer, but they're all a little bit more flatter because they're longer and they're harder to hit and people tend to hood the club and you see if you got all those little goosebumps on the cross the top or sky marks uh, that's what's happening is you're coming into the club like or the ball like that instead of coming through and that hybrids because they are shorter you don't get a chance to pull that off okay now before we get to talking about any of these these are the way that I hit them all right now you guys have seen me swing on some other ones I am not a massive swinger. I will be in that 90 mile an hour range, give or take, which I could say is right in that, you know, I'm on the cusp between the regular and stiff. Take it as it is. Now, I also suggest that you go get fit or at least get a good idea. Do the comparisons that we talk about because what doesn't work for me can easily work for you, all right? So this is just how I did them, how they compare, and we're gonna talk all about that one. So let's get started. All right, the four hybrids that we're gonna talk about are the Wilson Dynapower, the Srixon ZX model, the Mizuno STX, and the Callaway Paradigm. All pretty decent little hybrids, right? And they all are a little bit different, but there are a few similarities and you're gonna hear them in their description. So let's get started with the Wilson first. All right, Wilson has introduced the Dynapower as an entire line this year, and this is the hybrid that goes with it. Now, what does Wilson say about their golf clubs? They have what they're calling uh, an AI design face. There is some weight, uh, there is some weight 
transfer going on. There's a little bit of weight here that pulls the CG down and back so you get higher launch. Here, that's going to be a common theme, higher launch, okay? This is a bonded club. It is a bonded club, uh, so no adjustments on that one. What comes in this one? Well, on the one I used this time, and I picked it out specifically to see what would happen, is the hazardous red RDX smoke shaft. All right, this is a regular flex shaft. For those of you who know that hazardous RDX is an extraordinarily stout shaft. All right, extraordinarily stout. And I've got a stiff one in another club, and you'll see what happens. This is rated in their little hazard diamond, which I think is quite useful, by the way. 5.5, 2.8 degrees of torque, 70 grams, and with a mid-high spin. Now, we're going to go over specifications here in a minute. Uh, some of the things that they talk about when we talk about the Wilson Club is that it will have a variable face thickness. That's AI design that it has a tour inspired look, i.e. a little bit flatter look at a dress. And with the folks that they've got on there, you know Patrick's been doing pretty good. The, the Wilson guys show up and then, uh, and so they've been putting input into this. And higher launch, okay. Uh, that's pretty much what they're saying about this thing. Personally, it's a very clean look. This would be one of those clubs that, uh, this is one of those clubs that if you let it lie, it, it will appear open or even square at a dress. The minute you try and square it up, then yeah, the face is going to go closed. And some people will try and hood it. And uh, that's what I'm doing down here. I'm trying to hood the thing. And then that would give it that closed face look. But if you let it set, it'll look very, very square. Okay. Now I will give it some style points. I do like the red to the black. The gray tends to set it off and it goes right into a matte finish so you're not going to get uh, dizzy from looking at different colors and what like that. Okay, so the Srixon. All right, this is the Srixon ZX Mark II. Now we talked about this one on our, uh, when we were down at the PGA show with our friends down there. Very nice folks. Again, the ZX Mark II is a bonded club. It also employs the hazardous red RDX smoke, but this one is in the stiff flex, okay? And it is a 6.0, 2.4 degrees of torque, 80 grams, and the, of course, the mid spin. Now, the RDX, or I'm sorry, the uh, Srixon will talk about the rebound frame. Now, rebound frame is basically, basically two faces. There's a face within a face is what they will say. And what that means is that you have your typical face that's going on here, and somewhere back between back behind here, there is yet another face, and that's the rebound. So that the face, the original face, can give some, and a lot of the energy is uh, absorbed into the second face, so that you get the higher launch, right? The higher launch, and of course, there's a, another again the deeper CG, and you get that uh, the all the performance that they say you're going to get. Now, again. I set this down, uh, I set this one down and it gives me the feeling that the face is a little pro set. Uh, and again, that could give the reason why some people would think that it would hood on them. However, uh, you, the way that it sets up, the, the propensity to hood the face or that is not there. It's just not there. And you could, you know, it, it has this feeling of consistency in it. All right, so let's move on to the Mizuno Club. Okay, the Mizuno STX. The Mizuno STX has what they call the Cortex Chamber. Now, the Cortex Chamber is pretty interesting in that we call it the blue goo. All right, the blue goo has taken place of what was the wave in the previous models. And what they do is you can see it even in the, there's like a little bar in there. That little bar is the stainless steel, or is a steel, I won't say it's stainless, but it's steel, and it's surrounded by this blue goo in order to, what that does is when you push the weight closer to the face, it tends to lower spin, and it tends to actually lower the launch a little bit as well. Uh, does that do that? We'll see. Now, this, the, this is the bigger brother of the previous CLK. The CLK was extraordinarily popular here at McGolf and I don't see this changing too much around here. 
It's got a nice look at a dress. It has, instead of being the matte finish like the previous two, it has more of a, a shiny painted finish. It is, although it is dark, uh, it also has some weight coming to the back. It uses an M-A-S-I-C face. What does all that mean? That's just where they categorize a carbon face, okay? It is adjustable. The cool part about this one, it is adjustable, and it's plus or minus up in two. Uh, also, the lie angles will change when you go to do that, so you wanna be very, very careful. Uh, the difference here is that we're using the UST Mamea Link, all right, the Link hybrid shaft, and it's specifically designed for hybrids, and this one is the 75F4. F4 means stiff, all right, F3 means regular, and it's a 75 gram. Now I will give, there's a, another set of style points. You have a nice blue shaft going into a head that has a little sport, sports a little blue on it, and then you get an offset with a lot uh, gray and the black. Although I do like the texture of this Lampkin grip, and this one is the, uh, the 360, the STD plus two 360. I like the grip on this one. All right, the final one is the Callaway Paradigm. Now, the Callaway Paradigm is going to come in two models, the Paradigm or the Paradigm X. The Paradigm is going to be for the low to mid handicapper, where the STX is going to be for the mid to high handicapper. What does that mean? Well, what it really means is the Paradigm X is going to be slightly bigger and a little more draw bias than the regular Paradigm. Now, what is it, what's the difference here is they call it bat wing technology. And what is that? Basically, it's got some rails that goes in there and then there's some undercuts right here. Now, uh, this one also has the AI face and it's AI cup face technology. And it also will sport that weight that's in the front in a different form instead of the blue goo you have it, it's just really lodged right in there. This is also an adjustable club. However, it is a plus two, minus one, and then there's some draw factors that you can put into there. Uh, all in all, it has a, we would call it a more fairway woodish look kind of to it. Uh, I don't see that, and the reason why they would say that is because it's a little more rounded on the backside, although it's not real big. It's still very much a hybrid shape, it, but it's not as thin as the rest of them, okay? It is coming across with a different kind of hazardous shaft, and it is the hazardous silver. No RDX, no smoke, just the hazardous silver, meaning it should be a little bit more friendly. This one is a 6.0, 3.1 degrees of torque at 75, and again, mid-spin. Now, this one has the IA face for higher launch and, and some more weight placements to get the, the things that we want out of this particular club. Now, okay, now we know what all of them are made from. Now the rubber meets the road right here. Specs. As you guys know, I do all the specifications that go through here, right? So what we're going to have here, let's go with the, uh, we'll go with the, what did we do first? We'll go with the Wilson first, okay? The Wilson says it is a 40 and a quarter inch long club. Was it 40 and a quarter? Yes. Ding. All right. It was a 20, it is a 22 degree uh, lofted club, and I got 22 and a half. So a half a degree, ding, it wins. All right, it was supposed to be 59 degrees of lie angle. So I got 62 and a half. Boom, that didn't, that didn't pass. Uh, now, and the rest of it, oh, D1 swing weight, and yes, it was D1. So that was pretty cool. Now, remember, this was the regular flex shaft. I got 4.75, which is at the very upper end of the shaft. This is one I suspected might actually fit me pretty decent. So we'll look at it that way. Uh, so everything else came out the way it was supposed to. Uh, so other than the lie angle, it was pretty stout. All right. The Srixon, all right. The Srixon said it was a 39.75. I got 40 and a quarter and half an inch is not enough. All right, quarter inch, I'd give you half an inch, no. All right, the loft angle was supposed to be 22. And is it? Yes, it's 22. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. Again, the lie angle on this one is supposed to be 58. What was it? 60. Two degrees is my max that I give folks, all right? That, that's two things. That's manufacturing tolerance 
and it could be my eye. Do I think I'm off that much? No, but it's, it's, out, so it's inside the tolerance, so I give you kind of a, uh, right? That's right there on the edge. The other one is, as I said, it was supposed to be a D3, and I got a D4. One swing weight point, not going to suffer it. Ding, it wins on that one. Okay, so this one came out at a 5.75 because it's an S flex. Literally one flex higher. So the shafts are exactly what they say they're supposed to be. It's, a, it's high in the stiff range, and, and it, everything is the lower torque about it. So it did pretty good there. All right, the Mizuno. I have to read down at my point at my at, at these things because <laughs> I, I could put it way back here and read it, but why? Okay, and the Mizuno said it was supposed to be 40. And I got 40 and a half. And eh, that is not gonna cut it. I'm not dealing with a half of an inch. Although I do like the 40 and a half, by the way. That's just what it measured out to. Uh, loft angle 22, and I got 22 and a half. Ding, that works. That that's easily within me measuring it at all. This one says 58 and a half as the line angle. I got 60. That's one and a half degrees, again, within my tolerance. So ding, we'll give you one of those. Uh, swing weight was supposed to be a D1 and, I'm sorry, swing, yeah. Nope, swing weight's supposed to be a D2, and it was D2. So there we go. So we made it with that one. And again, with the F4 on this one uh, and 75 grams, again, it also found its way into the upper end of the stiff range. So the same as the other ones. Now these will be different profiles, but a lot of fun to play with. All right, last one, Callaway. All right, the Callaway said it was supposed to be 40, and it was 40, right on the button. So ding, uh, it's supposed to be 21, I got 22. So that's pretty decent, One will, we'll give that one. Now, it, if you haven't found out, they're all 22 or 22 and a half. So that half a degree is not going to be a big deal when it comes to uh, the distance game. All right, it's supposed to be 58, and I got 57. So one. So I give it that ding. So we're doing pretty good there. It's supposed to be D2, and I got D2. So ding. So we did really good there. Last but not least, uh, this the stiff shaft from the... Uh, silver, the hazardous silver, end up being right at the very bottom of the, or at the very top of the stiff rain, bottom of the X at a 6.0. So, and, and so it was still very stiff. So there you have it. Uh, there, no, not one every, not one manufacturer is perfect in this particular one, but that's the reason why you do these custom things so that they can get measured to make sure you're what you test with, right? Ever gone to a demo day and they say, the old adage is when you hit one really good at the demo day, that's the one you wanna buy? Yeah, because there are manufacturing tolerances and it could be one to two degrees higher. It could be one to two degrees either way of this suspected loft. Although the companies obviously did a very, very good job here. And what we're gonna see is a comparison against technologies and some of the shafts. So let's go hit some. All right, so here's the comparison of how, this is just results oriented, how they all perform. So we're gonna first start with the Call uh, Callaway Paradigm. And this was, they're all number fours. So they're 21, 22 degree um, hybrids with their various stock shafts. And so here's the flight of the, of the Callaway Paradigm. As you can see, I'm finding the center except for my one wayward right shot, which is going to look very much like a, a, a trend in when you see the other ones. Uh, pretty decent shots, and we'll go over how they did on average. All righty, so we go to the next one, the Mizuno STX Hybrid. Again, what we'll see is kind of in the group with one wayward shot, and we hit that one pretty good. And we go back, the Srixon ZX series, and it goes up. And no way, no wayward shot. How about that one? A little bit off to the right, but not too bad. And then our last one, the Wilson Dynapower. And it goes up into the air. And as you can see, a couple in the middle, and my wayward shot comes right back. All right, so we've seen how they fly. Now let's see how they compare. All right, from a purely distance standpoint, 
The Mizuno STX wins the day at 218, 227. That is carry in total. With Paradigm coming in second at 215, 223. The Dynapower at 211, 217. And the Srixon at 198 and 202. Now, why did we see what we saw? Well, let's compare one more. Uh, on an average, when we look at, again, this is all averaged out. It would appear the pa uh, paradigm is a little bit straighter on average. And what you saw was is that the four outweighed the wayward right shot. Where on the Mizuno, they all kind of geared towards that section. And that's what you see there. The Srixon found its way more towards the center. Now, I also swung the Mizuno and the Dynapower at the fastest with the Paradigm at the slowest and the uh, ZX Club uh, coming in a third place. Now, where it really gets down to business is in the Smash Factor category. And we can start from the first one, which would be the ZX is a 140, which is respectable, but I would say that's on the low end. And then the Dynapower at 143, again, very respectable, but at the lower end, the Paradigm I hit just basically dead solid. I can't believe that came off like that, but it did. And, the, and because of that number, the way it is, uh, swinging that low is the reason why I came in where I did. And then the Mizuno STX right square in the middle. That's where I put right about that. That's the beginning of the average above average range. Now, it also ended up being the lowest spinning club, and that's what they project it to be. Paradigm is next. Uh, Wilson is the one after that. And then uh, the ZX Club from Srixon is right after that. So not too bad. Now, from all of these guys right here, how did we hit them? You know, they always talk about high launch, high launch, high launch. So it would seem that the Srixon hit at the highest at 17.6, and that's in uh, degrees. 17.1 for the Dynapower, 16.5, which was the lowest and 17.4 for the Mizuno. So, you know, not too bad all in all. Uh, and we hit them fairly consistent, I would say, fairly consistent. And so now what we want to do is we want to see where they landed as a group. And here we go. So there's the group. So the Srixon is the green one. All right, the Wilson Dynapower is the pink one. The Mizuno XTX, STX, is the red one. And then the Callaway Paradigm is the blue one. So if you look, the tightest pattern actually belongs to the, the Srixon, albeit it's the shortest, but it is also the tightest. So if we want to start with that one, and we look them at, at a single club point of view, there's the STX. And of course, we saw them a little bit to my inside with one to the out. Keep in mind, I'm a lefty. There's the Wilson Dynapower. Right, and again, the wayward right shot, which is a little too far for me, uh, but a couple of good ones right down the groove. And then we see the Wilson, or I'm sorry, the Callaway Paradigm. I'm fine in the middle, which is the kind of way that this club has been advertised to work with the one wayward shot. And then we get into the Mizuno, which is, I, go, I call it the dot, 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 dot theory. It's just kind of going that way. And then one really wayward shot. So all in all, uh, nice testing, and let's go back and see who these would all be for. Okay, quite a surprise, right? The, the Mizuno wins the distance category with a really close second with the Callaway Paradigm. Surprising distance numbers from the Wilson, and also surprising distance numbers from the Srixon. Uh, so what do we think overall? Now that we've had them all and I've had a chance to hit them, the, uh, the Srixon does, or I'm sorry, the Mizuno does hit very well. It's exactly the way it came out. And I had one wayward shot into my inside. However, the rest of them were pretty much down the middle and they hit very well. Uh, the Paradigm hit very well, as we could tell with the high level of uh, smash factor. And it's exactly what they're talking about across their whole platform is off-center hits aren't nearly as penal, i.e. cup face. And that's what I got. Now, if I cranked up two more to, two more mile per hour, or even three more mile per hour to get to that, then all of a sudden that wins the distance contest. But I didn't, so it is what it is. And again, it was very consistent, save the one wayward shot. The Wilson, the surprise, was kind of the surprise performer out of it all. 
the regular flex shaft was the one that, if I look at my acceleration profiles throughout the shaft, this was the one that was the most consistent delivering the best results from the shaft. And I think that was probably because of the way that the face, uh, the face, you know, with that closure on it may have been setting it off just a little bit. But I really like the RDX uh, smoke red in the regular, right, because it plays a lot stiffer. So if, for those of you guys on the fence, this one might be one you want to go check out. And then finally, the, the Srixon was kind of disappointing. I just couldn't get the thing to go for some reason. And I truly believe it might be into the shaft because I don't think the technology is that bad. All righty. So again, who are we going to put this for? All right. So again, we got to keep this in mind. The Paradigm comes with two models. There's one for, we'll call it the mid to high handicapper. The, so, you know, they're all geared at the mid handicapper. So that's under the bell curve, right? So who would go with this? All right, so if you're that guy or that golfer, not the guy, but the golfer, that says they all look close to me and I don't like the way they sit. All right, so number one, uh, I would look at either Srixon or I would look at Mizuno. All right, Srixon or Mizuno, they do not appear to set close. They look very, very square to dress and they might not freak you out nearly as much. Now, for guys who can manipulate the face at a dress or like a particular look, my particular opinion in this issue would be the Paradigm and then the Mizuno. I like a painted surface. The, the way that it looks, the Paradigm to me is a little more comfortable underneath it for my eye because I do pull my hands a little bit forward, but I keep the face square. So that one and the Wilson Club to me would work very well, although I did hit the Mizuno very, very nicely. All right, so uh, that's where I would go with that. And again, I, you know, from a distance factor, the Mizuno wins the day. From a consistency factor, the Srixon wins the day. But, it's, but you're giving up, you know, a whole club. Am I doing that? No, I wouldn't even suggest that. So you got to find the ones that work for you and particular shaft combinations. Uh, personally, I like looking down at the painted surfaces, so Mizuno or uh, the Callaway one would work. If you're looking for something less distractive, then the Wilson or the Srixon would be the way to go. And then just make sure they're the right length, you get the right loft, get the right flex, and you'll have a lot of fun in them because they all come with multiple loft options, which I prefer. I carry three in my bag. So there you go. So it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for length, a little bit of both, or just plain old consistency, you get to see what it was, right? So hopefully you liked everything that you saw. Don't, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check us out on our live stream on Mondays. If you got any questions, put them in the show notes below. And always, as always, let's see your scores. Go low.